In June 2024, NASA awarded SpaceX a nearly $1 billion contract to develop a Dragon-based spacecraft to safely deorbit the International Space Station around 2030. But why destroy the longest-serving permanently crewed space station in human history after investing hundreds of billions of dollars into it over a third of a century? Should NASA try to save the ISS, or keep it going longer, or at least save it as a piece of cultural heritage? Before getting into all that, if you're new here, I'm Derek, a journalist who's been writing about space for nearly a decade. My channel, Orbital Velocity, explores humanity's ongoing trek toward a multi-planetary future with engaging, accurate content for all, from casual observers to passionate space enthusiasts. If you like space and want to stay informed about the latest happenings in human spaceflight-related topics, consider subscribing. And don't forget to launch that like button into orbit. NASA recently studied alternatives to deorbiting the ISS, including an uncontrolled reentry, disassembling to return to Earth, breaking it into smaller pieces, or even boosting it into a higher orbit. Let's go through them. Uncontrolled reentry isn't safe. The ISS is the largest human-made object in space, and an uncontrolled descent poses a huge public risk. NASA policy mandates a reentry risk to the public to meet or exceed 1 in 10,000, something that an uncontrolled descent cannot guarantee. NASA's first space station, Skylab, had a mass of 75 metric tons. It underwent an uncontrolled reentry in 1979, with a piece of it landing in southwestern Australia. We don't want a repeat of that with 420 metric tons. It could land anywhere in the world, including heavily populated areas. How about returning components to Earth? Well, that's extremely complex and costly. Assembling the ISS took 27 space shuttle missions and 161 spacewalks over 13 years. Plus, there's no large cargo bay to bring pieces back. I mean, maybe Starship in the future, but it would still be costly and take a lot of time. Repurposing parts in low Earth orbit is equally impractical due to disassembly issues and outdated aging 90s technology, and because NASA doesn't own all of the modules. Breaking the ISS into smaller pieces for deorbit is also impractical. The outpost operates as a single unit and requires a crew to operate. Smaller pieces would just render parts of it useless for communications, attitude control, and power, necessitating major modifications and spacewalks. Boosting the ISS into a higher orbit is a popular idea among space enthusiasts, offering the potential to extend its orbital lifespan for decades or even centuries. However, this option presents significant challenges and may even be the least viable from a safety perspective. Higher orbits are more congested with space debris, increasing the likelihood of a major impact from about once every 51 years at its current 400 km altitude to less than once every 4 years at 800 km. All altitudes above 400 km are worse until you get to about 1700 km. If you go a little further up and place it into a 2000 km orbit, the NASA study shows it would require over 130 metric tons of propellant, nearly a third of the ISS's current mass, to get it there. But hey, at least it'd be stable for upwards of 10,000 years? To do this, NASA has ruled out using SpaceX's Starship due to structural engineering challenges. And smaller existing reboost vehicles would need to be certified for higher orbits. Solar electric propulsion, to be used by the Artemis program's gateway outpost, would require about three years of continuous thrust at 15,000 kilograms of propellant to reach an orbit of about 1,000 kilometers, which is still well within the debris zone. Additionally, higher orbits would expose the ISS to the Van Allen radiation belts, harmful to both humans and equipment. Even with these measures, and assuming it doesn't get destroyed by space debris, the ISS would still re-enter Earth's atmosphere uncontrollably centuries or millennia later, again posing risk to human life. Thus, boosting to a higher orbit is not a feasible or ethical long-term solution. Well, how about handing the ISS over to a commercial operator? There have been no real takers on that suggestion. It would be too costly for commercial operators due to its age. And again, there are ownership issues with international partners. However, Axiom Space plans to use the ISS as a starting point for a new space station, detaching before the deorbit of the decades-old outpost. Finally, continuing ISS operations beyond 2030 might not even be safe, and waiting until it's unsafe risks an uncontrolled reentry. If commercial space stations take longer than expected to come online, it might be possible to do some short-term extensions to close the space destination gap, but all the international partners would have to agree. But the longer you extend its life, the more you risk a critical hardware failure. So, unfortunately, deorbiting the ISS is the only responsible choice. SpaceX's deorbit vehicle is expected to be ready by the end of the decade and will be operated by NASA. It will use an existing cargo dragon with a new component that is twice as long as the current trunk section. 
It'll contain roughly 16,000 kilograms of propellant and an additional 30 Draco thrusters for attitude control and thrust for the deorbit burn. SpaceX said it is six times more propellant and four times more power than today's Dragon spacecraft. Under the existing plan, the final crew would fly to the ISS in the first part of 2030. The deorbit vehicle would launch soon after that, docking to the forward port of the ISS. Over about six months, the crew would perform final station checkouts and ride the outpost while atmospheric drag takes it from its current 400 kilometer orbit to around 300 or so kilometers. Depending on solar activity, that could occur by early fall 2030. The crew would then depart the ISS, leaving it unoccupied for the first time in 30 years. The deorbit vehicle is expected to take sole control of the attitude and orbit of the ISS, guiding it down further to about 200-ish kilometers, taking another six months or so to the first part of 2031. Then a final powerful burn, likely lasting several tens of minutes, would reduce the velocity of the ISS by about 57 meters per second, allowing it to kiss the atmosphere soon thereafter and begin to break apart. The final breakup footprint will likely be a thin 2,000 kilometer long strip over a remote area of the ocean. While NASA hasn't decided the location, historically large spacecraft have been deorbited over the South Pacific Ocean. This would be similar to what was done with the 15-year-old 130 metric ton Russian Mir space station in 2001. Any pieces that survive reentry are expected to sink to the ocean floor harmlessly, ensuring no significant long-term environmental impact. After over 30 years of international collaboration and groundbreaking experiments, the greatest space station ever built will come to a fiery end. Let me know in the comments below what you think about NASA's plans to deorbit the ISS. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra.